Um, so today I'm going to be talking about this map I made last year um, on the Sierra Nevada range in a very beautiful, which is a very beautiful place in the world and it was made of a very beautiful place in time. Um, for a little bit of context on the project, uh, last year in 2017 the Sierra Nevada, which is located right in between <coughs> California and Nevada, um, had some of the greatest snow cover that it's seen in over a decade. Um, in 2016 and 2015, we had some of the lowest recorded snow cover. Um, if you're familiar with California at all, the best coast, um, you'll know that it's been plagued by a five-year drought. Um, 2017 was a very great year. Uh, unfortunately, in 2018, we're seeing just about the same shortage in snow cover. Um, this was most of my inspiration. I spent a lot of time, about 100 hours, working on this map starting at about March of 2017 and finishing at NASIS last year, where it won uh, for best cartographic design. Uh, I'm going to go through my workflow um, and how I created this map. I first did most of the data analysis in ArcMap and QJS, merging into uh, Photoshop for the terrain and then vector and layout um, in Adobe Illustrator going to be talking a lot of Photoshop-y kind of stuff, so follow along if you can. If you cannot, I would highly recommend going to these links. Um, I could also title this talk, How to Make a Map from Just Web Tutorials, uh, from some <laughs> cartography superstars, some in this room. Uh, Daniel Huffman, I went like half Huffman on this. Uh, I went very Tavares, Aaron, thank you, and, uh, and of course, Tom Patterson. Um, so, getting into it. So this is a uh, the finished terrain layer, um, so by the end of this, hopefully you should know how to replicate this. All my secrets are out. Um, if you look in Photoshop, you have your layers. Um, some people like to merge and compress all of their, uh, or flatten all of their layers. Um, those people are psychopaths. Uh, I like to keep folders to organize things uh, so that I could go back a year from when I make the map and give a tutorial on how the heck I did it. Uh, so I'm going to be following this snow cover, fill shade, urban water, uh, land cover, and texture. So we'll save the best for, best for last snow. Uh, hill shade, first you start off with your standard uh, DEM. I got this, uh, this was an SRTM 30 meter hill shade. Um, something I learned from Aaron Tavares is to lighten your hill shade using either a Gaussian blur or you can use a median filter. So you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Um, you then can lighten it. Uh, so this is the reason I did this, so when you look at the map up close, you know, you're not getting all these artifacts that may have come in with, uh, with the DEM or the hill shade. Um, to lighten it, I just used the curves layer and uh, went ahead and moved that little thingy on the right up just a little bit. Uh, then I isolated the shadows layer um, by taking that hill shade and taking another curves layer and you make this little, you know, you kind of isolate the lowest and highest um, part of the histogram. Uh, this all can be found on the tutorials that I put. Um, to isolate those shadows so that way you can colorize them a nice frosty blue. Uh, you can do the same thing for the highlights. And you just go ahead and switch that, that little curves adjustment doodad, and it, uh, it gives you the, the highlights, and you can see it. It doesn't really do a whole lot. It's like super subtle. There's a lot of things in this map that um, I like spent like so much time working on, and I like did a couple like test prints, and then I would ask my buddy Ty to like take a look at it and be like, I don't notice a difference. Sorry, man. And uh, I notice a difference urban and water. So the reason why I, um, I, I wanted to make sure that the urban and water uh, remained on top, um, so that way I can manipulate it separately, uh, just so you know. I, I know that urban and um, water are also land cover classifications in NLDC. So this is the data that I used, NLCD. Um, and uh, so working with this, uh, Daniel Huffman has a couple of tutorials um, with Practicardo on how to like really finely uh, edit water features so they pop you know just a little bit more 
And so you can go ahead and go to the layer style, do the bevel and emboss, um, and just copy. I just copied what Dan Huffman did, and it worked really well, uh, just to make those, uh, those water features pop just a little bit more. Uh, the same thing can be done for all the land cover. Um, since the you know, trees are uh, taller than grass, and trees are taller than most things, you kind of want, uh, I wanted the, the tree layer to pop just a little bit more, so using that, that same bevel and emboss, you can just sort of you know, pillow it out a little bit, and it, um, it lightens it as well, and it gives it the effect that it's a little bit higher than the rest of the layers. Um, something funky that I did was uh, uh, copying the land cover um, data and putting it into its own, um, so keeping the land cover the way it is, making a copy of it and putting that copy below and turning it into a texture layer. Um, this uh, allowed me to blend a little bit with uh, a couple different blending modes. I think I used pin light, which I've never, never used before. Maybe this is the first time in history someone has ever used pin light. Um, uh, and so to get a little bit of texture, you just go to this like really awesome filter gallery um, where I use the texturizer, use sandstone, which is uh, really, I think, the best, um, the best texture here, and also uh, just sort of gives a nice little aesthetic. You can kind of mess around here and see which one looks the most like tree cover. Um, gives it a little bit of a more like tree-like essence to it. Um, I then go ahead and mask, um, so that's in the texture layer, I go ahead and mask the texture by the DEM. So I really wanted the highest parts of the Sierra Nevada to have the most texture. Um, I think the Sacramento Valley is a great place. However, I didn't want it as prominent in my map. Um, so by masking it by the DEM layer, everything on the outside sort of fades away, it's especially in terms of texture and the parts that were most important are very prominent. Uh, then you go ahead and slap the hill shade on top. I use a multiply uh, blending mode, and that um, really does a good job at bringing out all those peaks and ridges here. Man. Last but not least, the snow. So snow is really difficult to work with sometimes with maps, um, especially when you're dealing with other land cover classes. So I wanted to make sure snow was on top. Um, so that way, when I use any, any other blending modes, they didn't, you know, when, when you use a blending mode with white and any other color, nothing happens. So I had to do something completely different. So I also didn't really have any snow cover data, so this is just a regular Landsat 8 image. I stitched what seemed like 100 tiles of Landsat data together and took so long. I actually ran a process on QGIS and ArcMap to see which one would run faster. They both crashed. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, so yeah, I used a different computer. Um, no competition here. Um, so uh, in order to extract the snow cover layer, uh, as you can see, there's a problem where snow is white, and so are clouds, and so are some other features. So uh, by switching the color bands, you can get this false color shortwave infrared image, which visualizes the ice and the snow as blue, this bluish teal, you can argue. Um, what color it is, but uh, then you can separate out from snow and cloud cover. Uh, the way to do that, you just make the red channel band 7. This is of a uh, Landsat 8 image that has uh, more than just a few bands. So Land 7 is shortwave infrared, uh, green is going to be in band 5, and blue is going to be band 4. Uh, then I use the select by color range feature, so uh, you can go ahead and start isolating that bluish sort of tealish color by clicking on it a few times. You want to make sure you use this like plus eyedropper um, icon here so that way you can gather multiple you know test areas for the snow cover and then finally you get um, a selection of everywhere that there was snow. Um, I then go ahead and mask that and make my own pretty much the same thing as a land cover layer. Um, I can go ahead and superimpose that on top. As you can see, uh, the hill shade is below that, so nothing bleeds through. Um, so I go ahead and make my own shadows um, and highlights for the snow layer, so I don't multiply. I just put another shadows and highlights layer on top. I make those a little bit more frosty blue to give it a snowy texture. Um, 
And then I also uh, masked anywhere that there was a, uh, anywhere that there was forest and snow to give it additional texture. So that way, because the texture layers at the very bottom, I didn't want all of them to you know, multiply through. I just go ahead and give those areas their own texture. And then uh, put it into Illustrator and bam, it just looks like that. <laughs> No, so I, yeah, so I, I spent a lot of extra time after that. So the first part was just the train, and then the, the 50 plus hours were of label, labeling like 100 peaks. Um, I was very happy with the way it turned out. Um, it was awarded Best Cartographic Design last year in Montreal, and it's also featured in this year's uh, Atlas of Design. I want to give a very special thanks to the HSU Cartography Lab for all their help. I want to thank Aaron and uh, everyone else for letting me like sleep in the cartography lab while I was working on the map. So um, if you are uh, interested in taking a look at it, it's going to be in the gallery today. Um, if you want to purchase it, go to shop.ndcartography.com. If you're a student, this is the honor system. Go ahead and do student.ndcartography.com. Um, if not, somewhere a kitten will die in the world. So make sure you make sure you're a student. Um, if, uh, if you want to take a look at the slides for those tutorials, uh, go to Alexander the Nate on Twitter, and uh, have a great Nasus. <laughs> Any questions? That was awesome. Yeah, Thank you. straight face. Yeah. Come on, be serious. This is PCD. This is, this is the Sierra. All right. I see hands over here. I find that map incredibly beautiful. And you. you talk about um, making the relief first. But honestly, I feel like you must have made some kind of desi design decision about the orientation and the, the depth and the, the, just the overall uh, the size of the map. Yeah, I guess I didn't comment on that. The, the orientation was actually from Aaron Tavares. He created a custom projection um, for us mapping the Sierra Nevada class that Humboldt State had. And so that's also where I got most of the information or the inspiration. Any other questions? No hands? Everyone wants to leave? Okay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for letting me wrap up PCD. Thank you.